Uh, th therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Nepean and Carleton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, I rise today uh, to pay tribute to a dear friend of mine, John Newman, who passed away earlier this week. Uh, John was an advisor to me on agriculture. He was also a friendly face. I got to know John over uh, probably 13, 14 years ago when I started to embark on this career at provincial politics at the Ontario Legislature. And he lived in the community of North Gore, which is uh, part of the Carleton part of my riding, which I won't be representing anymore. Uh, John died uh, this week, um, but he had a life that was so well worth living and so well worth putting into the record here at the Ontario Legislature. He spent 22 years in Canada's military. Uh, he and his wife, Marion, then purchased Jomar Farms in 1966, and uh, just a few years ago, six years ago, they celebrated a milestone uh, wedding anniversary, and I'm sure every year since then has been blessed. Um, th their farm was recognized for excellence uh, throughout Ontario and Canada, uh, particularly by the old Kempville College in Kempville, not too far from North Gore, and the University of Guelph. They taught uh, students at their farm. John and Marion were recognized as Master Feed Awards for the Top Stalker Quality and OSCIA Certificate for Soil Management. And John offered excellent farming uh, advice to those throughout mm -hmm. Ontario. He was Ontario Cattlemen's Association Members Board of Directors, which is what helped me in my early years as a member, asking him for great advice. But it was in 2000 when John Newman became a founding director of the Canadian Cattle Identification Agency. And, Speaker, you'll recall that we had a BSE crisis in 2003. And that's when John became a critical voice for Ontario beef, for every one of us, to talk about the great excellence that we have here, as well as, as championing as we move forward. But a few years ago, John and Marion were at a Michael Buble concert. And I was sitting there and I said to my husband, I think that's John Newman. Why would he be at a Michael Buble concert? Well, it was their 50th anniversary for him and Marion. And I know Marion's watching at home, and I just want to say, you know, Michael Buble said it best. You're everything. I sing along because you're my favorite song. You're everything. And I know, Marion, you're home today and newly moved into Barhaven. But John had a lasting impact on me, many people in Carleton County and throughout Ontario. And I know to you and your family, he meant the world. And for that, we are grateful that you shared him with us, not only in agriculture, but also as he served Canada. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements the member from Algoma, Manitoulin. Well, thank you, Speaker. And yesterday, May the 1st uh, highlights that May is Lyme Awareness Month. And it is with great joy and happiness that I want to recognize many of the members of the Lyme Task Force for submitting in this great report on Lyme disease and tick-borne illnesses task force. What it does, it lays out a path so that we could start looking at the real challenges of addressing the needs of individuals with Lyme disease through prevention and control, through surveillance, through public engagement, through care and treatment support, Mr. Speaker. And that means establishing centers of excellence for tick-borne illnesses where we're going to start doing that R&D, where we'll be able to amass that information and start providing it to our physicians and our, our caretakers to care, to care for individuals. But the research that is going to be happening as well is work with patients and providers and researchers, conduct a review of the current clinical practices and review the current testing methodologies for diagnosing, conduct a systematic review focusing on treatment. These are pillars. These are going to be open discussions. These are going to be additional task force that are going to be developed to really look at providing that care, the acknowledgement and the acceptance of individuals who are suffering with Lyme disease in this province. I couldn't be more prouder of these individuals, and I have to give credit where credit is due. The present Minister of Health provided a lot of assistance on this, and the previous Minister of Health, Mr. Eric Hoskins. I give credit where credit is due. The task force, you did an amazing job, but this is the beginning. Thank you. Member, member from Ottawa South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my father-in-law, Lauren Hooper, a military veteran who served in World War II. Today, he was honoured with a silver leaf on the Tree of Life at the Pearly and Rideau Veterans Long-Term Care Centre. 
It was presented by the Director General of the Aerospace Equipment Program. I would like to have been there with him and my wife, Linda, for this honour. Instead, I'd like to honour him with a few words. Born in Ottawa in 1922, Lauren was the second son to William and May Hooper. Lauren's career in the military began in what he describes as a less than captivating stint as a Saturday night soldier, as a member of the non-permanent active militia. In 1942, Lauren volunteered for chemical testing in the Chemical Warfare Laboratories in Ottawa. Unlike many other volunteers, he was lucky not to have adverse effects from the testing. At the onset of World War II, Lauren knew what he wanted to be, a pilot, eventually serving as a wireless gunner after having completed his in-air training in Harvard aircrafts. He, have, he was eventually posted to PEI Coastal Man, Command, where Private Lauren uh, spent his days in pursuit of German U-boats. As he tells it, I never shot at anyone, and nobody ever shot at me, or if they did, they were a very bad aim. In 1943, Lauren met and married his wife, Yvonne. They were known as Hoop and Toots, or Nanny and Poppy, and they eventually bought a house in Alta Vista and had their only daughter and my best friend, Linda. And throughout his life, Lauren has been an avid runner, participating in the Terry Fox race until he was 85 and running many 10Ks. From Linda, the grandchildren, and myself, grandchildren Kirsten, John, and James, great grandchildren Vaughn, Sloan, and Fraser, we're all very proud of you. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Prince Edward Hastings. Thanks, Speaker. What's going on on the south shore of Prince Edward County is an absolute travesty. Uh, this government has broken its own rules around environmental protection against species at risk. Environmental restrictions were put in place in its initial renewable energy approval, and the government is allowing them to be violated as construction continues at the site. We've had reports of trespassing on private lands that don't have a leaseholder agreement for turbine construction and additional transmission construction. WPD officials are apparently offering monetary reimbursement on site for damage to property with landowners that don't have counsel present to act on their behalf. This government has allowed a state of corporate lawlessness to occur on the south shore of Prince Edward Shame. County, and it has said nothing to uphold any of the energy or environmental agreements it has signed. Wow. This Liberal government has pretty well told the people of Prince Edward County that there is no rule it won't bend to ensure this project is in the ground as quickly as possible. Analysts have said the project isn't necessary. With the amount of solar hosted in Prince Edward, the county may already be net neutral, and the distance of the project from a load of any size means this government is allowing WPD to erect nine white elephants on the south shore of Prince wow. Edward County. It's done so over the objections of local residents and in spite of its own rules. Speaker, this project should be put to an end now. Thank you. Further members' statements. The member from London West. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to highlight the great work that is being done in my community by Canadian Manufacturers and Exporters Southwestern Ontario Board. On May 9th, the organization will hold its 23rd annual London Manufacturers Recognition and Scholarship Awards Night, an event that brings together over 200 manufacturers and professionals to network and celebrate local industry achievements. Most importantly, the awards night provides eight promising Western, Fanshawe and secondary school students who are enrolled in manufacturing-related programs with $2,000 scholarships. Speaker, despite the loss of 300,000 manufacturing jobs in Ontario over, over the last 10 years, manufacturing remains a key sector for London's local economy and for the southwestern region as a whole. Events like the CME Awards Night are critical in the face of an economy that has seen almost all job growth concentrated in the GTA and Ottawa over the last decade, leaving the rest of the province far behind. A recent analysis of labour force survey data shows that between 2008 and 2018, under this Liberal government, 94 per cent of all new jobs were created in the GTA or Ottawa, with only 6 per cent growth in the rest of Ontario. Speaker, there is no question that London's economic prosperity remains closely linked to the health of our manufacturing sector. With efforts of the CME, we are helping London manufacturing.
manufacturers to develop the talent necessary to innovate, Thank connect, you. and grow their business. Thank you, Speaker. Further member statements, member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to speak about a wonderful, special uh, community in my riding, and the, the community is called the Lawrence Heights area. The Lawrence Heights community uh, hosts uh, the largest public housing uh, community in Canada, the largest in Canada. But within that community, we have a community health centre. We have a great high school, the John Polanyi High School. We also have a revitalization program that's going on. Uh, it is similar to the one that took place at Regent Park in downtown Toronto, whereby the housing stock is being improved. It's being uh, made into mixed housing with uh, at market rent, subsidized rent, seniors' housing, all under construction right now. We have uh, uh, even uh, part of it is a uh, for uh, uh, rent uh, private ownership. So, and uh, this week we announced a uh, joint project between the federal, provincial, and municipal government to build a community hub there, which is going to have arts programs, uh, a swimming pool, a community center, a senior center, all within the Lawrence Heights community. So the people in the community are not only getting new housing, they're getting new parks, they're they're also getting this wonderful state of the art. Uh, community hub that's uh, going to make the Lawrence Heights community uh, even better than it is right now. So congratulations to all those who worked on the Lawrence uh, Heights community project, and the future is very bright. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Sault Ste. Marie. Here, here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, just this past uh, week, we learned that the uh, U.S. tariffs, 25 percent tariff on steel, 10 percent alu aluminum, was extended uh, by uh, President Trump for one further month. I just want to say this. Um, we work better when we work together. Uh, within all levels of government, between all party lines, if we can work with our friends uh, south of the border in the United States, uh, we need to really demonstrate to them that they need us as much as we need them. Yep. A northern-southern trade war is not good for Ontario, and it's certainly not good for the people of my community in Sault Ste. Marie, not good for the workers at Algoma Steel. The problem that both our markets are dealing with is Asian steel dumping, not what is occurring uh, between northern and uh, southern trade. Uh, we are pro-free trade. Steel needs to be the number one exporter out of Sault Ste. Marie, not our youth. Ontario needs to be open for business. Uh, we need to uh, show uh, it's not our job as government to make business thrive. It's our job to make sure that there's the environment present for business to thrive. So again, I really think it's important for all of us to work together, all levels of government, all party lines, in order to try to get this issue resolved uh, with our friends south of the border. Uh, we cannot succeed with a trade war. It will not end well for either side. Um, my last few seconds, uh, Mr. Speaker, I really just want to mention my Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds and uh, back at home uh, just won the Wayne Gretzky Trophy and uh, have uh, surpassed uh, uh, the uh, Kitchener uh, Rangers and uh, congratulations to them. But uh, Sioux Greyhounds facing off in the finals of the OHL playoffs starting tomorrow night in Sault Ste. Marie against the Hamilton Bulldogs. Here, here. Yeah, here. Greyhounds go. For the member, same as the member from Trinity Spadina. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Um, I would like to uh, talk about a great organization in the downtown core, the Massey Hall. Uh, Massey Hall, as you know, is a not-for-profit charity. Uh, it, it does a great job in showcasing not only domestic talent, but uh, talents across the world. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, joining Minister Souza, Minister Bill Morrow, for announcement um, a couple of days ago of uh, $60 million uh, joint funding to uh, support the revitalization of Massey Hall. And right. for any member who has been in Massey Hall, including you, Speaker, uh, you feeling. know what I'm talking about. This hall, is the acoustics uh, effects, Amazing. the design, the stained glass now is currently hidden behind the walls are fantastic. And I can't wait to see um, the after the uh, renovation, the amazing effect of, uh, of this great building. Um, over the years, uh, I know Massey Hall has been extending the, uh, their arms to welcome more international renowned artists. Uh, just last year, I was at uh, Massey Hall enjoying a comedian uh, from China to uh, perform. And it was a packed house, and there was a lineup outside. As well, uh, I think two years ago, if I remember correctly, um, there was a Korean vocal artist group came to Massey Hall and attract so many 
uh, local Korean community members to come and enjoy this uh, great performance. So congratulations, Massey Hall. I want to thank a uh, member from Eglinton Lawrence, uh, federal member Adam Vaughn, and uh, uh, city, um, city councillor Kristen Wong Tan for their support on this outgoing project. Thank you. Okay. I saw Further member statements to the member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It is a pleasure to rise and share with members in the House news about a group of indiv individuals in my riding of Bruce Gray, Owen Sound, who are doing very honourable work to address poverty in our local communities and across the world. Owen Sound Hunger and Relief Effort, or OSHARE, served over 20,000 meals to individuals and families in our community last year. To raise money for meals, Jeffrey Robbins, owner of Aveda Main Street, hair salon in Owen Sound, together with Barry Crystalbrink of Barry's Construction, organized a walk for food and water in Owen Sound. This year, they raised 75000 and in 2016, they raised close to 47000 making it the top fundraising Aveda salon in Canada. Mr. Crystalbrink was also the top fundraiser for individual walkers that year. Since the first annual walk, they have raised $270,000. The Aveda Walk for Food and Water is held annually in Owen Sound during Earth Month. In addition to raising funds to assist in providing needed services to vulnerable individuals in our communities, the walk is also helping raise public awareness about the need to improve access to clean drinking water around the world. The average walk is between five and six kilometres, which is a distance women and children typically have to walk every day in rural developing communities worldwide to collect water. I was happy to join Jeff and Barry and all the other volunteers, donors and sponsors this past Friday for the 10th annual walk. Mr. Speaker, I'm very proud of my community's efforts to address poverty needs, and I'd like to thank Jeff Berry and all who supported for making a difference and making strides in our community and around the world. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore time for reports by committees. The member from Ancaster, Dundas, Flamborough.